Lewandowski's been picked out. Socks down to his ankle. Picks out Stansfield! That's the hat trick! And that's what dreams are made of! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Park Life, the official Exeter City podcast. We're back from the international break and ready to return to league action as City host Wigan Athletic at SJP on Saturday. The sides haven't met at the park since 1997, uh, but they're a club that Gary Coldwell knows very well. So many angles to cover, so let's get straight into it. Coming up in today's show, I speak to Expression FM's Sam Parks to preview the visit of Wigan Athletic on Saturday. I also speak to City winger Vincent Harper, who's just landed in from Kenya after their friendly with Russia on Monday. I also get the lowdown on the Latics from Barry Worthington from the Wigan podcast Progress with Unity. Finally, I catch up with goalkeeper Harry Lee to talk about how his loan spell is going at Western Supermare. First up then, let's preview this weekend's action with Sam Parks from the University of Exeter's Expression FM. Sam, welcome to Park Life for a second time. You were back on the on the pod back in August, of course, uh, to preview City's game against Reading, which we won thanks to a late stunner from Rhys Cole. But things have changed a little bit since then. The Grecians briefly found themselves top of League One, but have since lost their last four consecutive league games finding themselves 12th in the League One table. From your perspective, where do you think it has gone wrong uh, for City? Yeah, uh, a pleasure to be back on, Tom. Um, but, you know, it, it's been rough for City the first the, the past couple of weeks, the month or so. I just think, you know, an accumulation of injuries has, has not helped City at all. I think long-term injuries to, you know, new signings like the rights of Dion Rankin, who looks so bright come the start of the season. He's now out and it's looking like at least another two, three weeks for him. You know, them attacking players, you know, we had Jack Aitchison out. We had Muske, the striker, who we thought was going to bring goals, but injured. But, you know, it's it's been injuries and you couple that with with hard games. You know, Oxford away is always a tough one. They're in brilliant form and it just doesn't really look like it clicked for City. So I think injuries could definitely be one pointer at the moment about the faltering form of City. Yeah, the injury list is still pretty long, it must be said, but Admiral Musgrave appears to be returning to, to fitness and so does Ryan Trevitt, who started the season so brightly for us. Um, from, I suppose, the players' perspective, the week off that they had because the players were three of the players were on international duty, that must be exactly what, what the boys needed to, to regroup. Yeah, it's huge and it is much needed, you know, from their performances... Before the little break, it, it looked like they needed to just reset on the training ground, put a bit of work in and, and just come back refreshed. And I think that's really what's going to help. And then, you know, that extra week and a half of no games, no traveling is really going to be good for players coming back. You know, Muske, as you just mentioned, he looks like he'll be fit and firing. Trevitt, who, who got a few minutes before the break, an extra week and a half on, he could be in contention to start, which is really good. And two players that City need back in that starting eleven. For sure. And with senior first team players coming back from injury, it allows for some players, uh, younger players, I suppose, to go out on loan. We saw uh, Mitch uh, Beardmore going out on loan to to Tavistock. We also saw Sonny Cox, of course, striker who's, who's played quite a lot for City this season. He's headed out on loan uh, to Yeovil Town. What do you make of that decision? It looks like a really good development loan. Yeah, I think this is a brilliant move for all parties, really. Yeovil, top of the league. They're going to look to bolster their attack further. And why not if you're getting a youngster like Sonny Cox in? He's looked good at the moment. We've seen bright spells in League One, but all credit to Sonny for stepping up. But at the moment, it just looks like a step too far starting in League One, game in, game out for City. You know, he's only young. He's got that potential. And I think a loan spell of two, three months of constant starts and maybe bag some goals would be great for confidence. And, you know, City can have him back in January and then assess. But it's a perfect loan spell uh, for all parties. But moving on to Saturday then and Wigan, uh, the side that City face at SJP. Wigan, of course, a side that Gary Coldwell knows very well. Of course, he won this division as Latics manager back in 2016. uh, And he also won the FA Cup with them, of course, as a player in in 2013. We know he's good friends with the current manager uh, of, of Wigan, Sean Maloney having assisted him at Hibernian and also played alongside him for many years at Wigan. What do you think of this Coldwell-Maloney 
the Wigan dynamic coming into the game? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting one. You know, they're obviously really good mates and they know each other really well and the way they manage, they'll know each other really well. So it could be a really interesting one. You know, Caldwell will have that insight about how Wigan play and the Wigan way of playing. But then again, on the other hand, we're going to go know how Caldwell likes to set up his teams. A really, really interesting one. Um, I think, you know, that's going to make for a really even game and possibly a, a really good contest. We're going to decide that have had a mixed start to the season. Despite being deducted eight points before the season began, they don't sit bottom. Instead, they find themselves 23rd in League One, but still in a pretty difficult situation. The Latics have also lost their last four league games. What have you made of them this season? Yeah, they've got a very similar record to the Grecians. I, th- I think they've been good in spells, but, you know, that recent run of form is something that they'll look to, you know, wipe off just like City. So I think they could be coming with a bit of a vengeance, but I've expected more from this Wigan side, to be honest, this season. I expected them, and I think many did, to just climb out of those spots, get in the playoffs and start challenging. They've got a really good squad. Um, Charlie Wyke up front, obviously, is a, is a goal scorer. Josh McGuinness as well, international player. You know, it's a, it's a very good team. And you'd expect them to to do slightly better than they're doing at the moment, unfortunately. But, you know, they've still got quality players, so we definitely can't rule them out. City do have uh, that home advantage and the support from the Big Bank is going to be so vital yet again. Another chance for the Grecians to bounce back. Do you think they can take it? Uh, I, I think they can. You know, that rest that the Grecians got for that week and a half off will do them the world of good. And I'm sure the the big bank will be right behind them, like always. Tickets are selling well, um, as they have all season. So, you know, expect near a full house for this one. And I think I think we can give the Latics a run for their money. You know, they've also lost four in a row. They might not have a strong confidence. And with the players coming back for City and uh, likely a fit striker up front, it, it could be a very interesting proposition. And, you know, City could have enough to nick that three points. Well, let's hope so. Sam, thank you so much for joining me. No worries, Tom. Thank you very much. Next up, I'm joined by Vincent Harper, who's just returned from international duty with Kenya. Vincent, welcome to Park Life. Thanks so much for joining us. The last few months have been pretty big for you, making the huge step up from non-league football into the Football League, becoming a regular in City's first team, and then getting a call up to the Kenyan national team. You must have really enjoyed everything that's happened to you since you arrived at the club in June. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, first of all, grateful for the opportunity to to be at Exeter. I think obviously the the Kenyan moves sort of come from that. Um, but yeah, all in all, I've really enjoyed it. Um, something I've I've wanted um to do be part of a first team league club. So it's going quite well so far. So yeah, hoping it carries on. Yeah, well, exactly. And um, we'll, we'll focus a little bit more on, on your time with Kenya then. Talk to me a little bit about your time with, with the national team last week. How did it all go? What, what did you get up to? Um, yeah, it was quite an eye opener, to be fair. Um, not used to, to training double sessions every day. So yeah, it sort of had a physical toll on me. But it, it, was, it was enjoyable. It was obviously an honour to get called up for Kenya, both parents and most of my family are from Kenya. So it was sort of nice to do them proud and get the call up. I was born there, moved uh, over here when I was quite young and used to go over nearly every other year, but I haven't gone back for quite a while now. So, Amazing. yeah. Yeah, no, well, it's great that, that you've had the opportunity to link up with the squad. Um, just talk to me a little bit about the process of being called up because I know a, 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 to a lot of Exeter City fans, it was a, a bit of a pleasant surprise. Many might not have even known that you were eligible for Kenya, but just let us let us know how, how that process all worked. Well, I had uh, the manager message me probably a month before. So we're just having a bit of back and forth, just speaking and stuff like that. And then things went well and he met, uh, contacted the club, uh, which frankly, they um, allowed me to go out there and accepted the request to go on to camp. And then I think it was probably a few days before they announced it. And yeah. Yeah, amazing. And uh, how did you come to that decision to represent Kenya? Because I know that you'd... You'd played for, I believe it was the England C team, wasn't it? Where you got a bit of experience there. And then obviously making that decision to represent Kenya. How, how did you come to that? I had a chat with myself and my family. Um, and obviously Asian as well. And sort of weighed everything up. Uh, and I think it was probably the right and best decision. Being realistic with myself. What are the best opportunities for myself? And I think going to play for Kenya and representing my country and obviously family is probably the best choice. It's a fascinating story. It really is. 
But let's just focus on football happening a little bit closer to home now. And City have had a, a week rest thanks to your international call-up. It's given the squad an opportunity to regroup, relax, recover uh, from the injuries that have plagued the squad over the past few weeks. Do you think the squad will benefit from that break, that opportunity to regroup? Yeah, I think 100%. I think yeah, we can sort of use it as a little reset um, in terms of everything. Obviously, we haven't had the best of run of form, but I think this little reset um, will do us good. I've heard the training's been intense and everyone's um, putting in a great effort and cheered. Um, so I think we just have to go and show that on, on Saturday. Yeah, and Wigan are a side that have had a mixed start to the season. Uh, just like City, they've, they've lost their last four consecutive games after a really bright start to the season. Are you preparing for a close game? Um, I feel like in this league, is, you've got to just take each game as they come. I think you can only play with what's in front of you. And I think we've, all, we've got a great team and I think we could beat anyone on our day. I think it's just important to mainly focus on ourselves and do the basics, right? Yeah. And finally, how keen are you and the squad to bounce back with a win in front of the fans at SJP? That's what, that's what it's, always, it's always good to, to get the big bank bouncing and, and just get the overall mood up and, and positive. It's always nice to get three points and sort of that shapes up your the rest of your weekend as well. Amazing. Well, that, thank you so much for, for joining us, Vincent. It's been great to hear everything that you've, that you've been getting on uh, with uh, over the past couple of weeks. All right. Thanks for having me. Cheers. It's time to get the lowdown on Saturday's opponent, Wigan Athletic, from Barry Worthington, the host of the Progress with Unity podcast. Barry, welcome to Park Life. Thanks for joining us. It's been a tricky past year for Wigan Athletic. Relegation, points deductions, ownership change, managerial changes, one of those even being Colo Torre. It's, um, it's been an, one hell of a year, and I know it's only been one year, but you must feel like you've aged a decade. Yeah, well, over the past two or three seasons, we've it's been a bit of a rough ride, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I was in administration during the COVID pandemic, and what a time to be in administration when nobody can go to games, you know. So we, we managed somehow to scrape our way out of that. And then, like you say, uh, last season, it all fell apart again. But we'd had a, a good season, the season in between. We finished champions in League One, and we went into last season with a great deal of optimism uh, under the guidance of Liam Richardson. Uh, we started off all right. Uh, we, we'd gone up on the crest of a wave as champions and, and that form continued because we were a very hard team to break down and, and play against. And everybody thought, you know, all the supporters thought everything was fine. In November, we went seventh in the table. We beat Blackburn. We went seventh. And then that was it. The wheels totally fell off. Liam Richardson got sacked and Cole Ortura came in. Possibly the worst appointment in football history. Absolutely <laughs> no idea where that came from. Awful, awful. So we was in a bit of trouble. So when Toure came in, he tried to play. I don't know what he tried to play, to be honest with you. Uh, nobody did. We were off. We went from bad to absolutely awful. Uh, we, we took three 4-1 pastings on the trot. I mean, after the first 4-1... You change the team round and make it solid. He, he, he didn't. He went more expansive and, and we got another two, you know, 4-1 defeats. Uh, so we lasted nine games and then he, he was out the door. So we got we got a points deduction last season. Morale were for, through the floor. Results were, were pretty bad. Sean Maloney came in, changed his round, made us a little bit difficult to beat. We picked a few points up here and there, but we, inevitably we got we got relegated. Our new owner stepped in. The guy who bought us is he owns Wigan Warriors Rugby League side, uh, who were, to be honest with you, they were our main rivals before all this. There's a lot of ill feeling between the two clubs, fan base wise, for historical stuff. But I, I mean, I'd like to think that we can put all that behind us. But anyway, the guy who, who owns us, Mike Danson, he's quite adamant it has to be self sustainable as much as possible. Sean Maloney said that he can make it such with his model that he's got uh, of bringing academy players through, bringing in free transfers and selling players. You know, a, a model that I'm sure Exeter used something very similar to that, you know, because you've sold some players for decent money and, and it keeps your club sustainable and, and moving forward. And, and that's what Maloney's you know, told the new owner that he'd do if he came in. So we started the season. We, I think, we lost seventeen first team pros who we got off the off the wage bill because we were on big big money. 
So we're on a transfer embargo. And what that means uh, for us is that we can't sign anybody for any money at all, even loan players. So if we want to bring a, a transfer in, it has to be a free transfer. Uh, if we want to bring a player in on loan, we have to negotiate a free loan, which is very, I've been told is very difficult to do because if a player is any good, there's usually two or three clubs wanting to take them on loan and then the, the own club can demand a fee for them and a, a big percentage of the wages. So we're going cap in hand to these clubs saying, can you uh, support us by paying a fair chunk of the wage? And also, can we have them for nothing? You know, so that's mm-hmm. that's what's been happening. So we've been getting getting lads who are not quite 100% fit. They're not experienced and they've, they've not a lot of mileage on the clock and they're not very old either, so they're all young. Yeah, it, well, it seems like a, a, a an interesting situation at Wigan. And I think you've sort of summed it up quite nicely, to be honest, for the last three years and, and that last one year in particular. You mentioned a little bit earlier about the morale around the club. Now, obviously, you've been a lot uh, through a lot o- over the past year. But does the new ownership feel like a new sense of hope or, or are there still some real concerns about the progress that the club is making? I think there's, there's a lot of things that, in the infrastructure of the club that needs sorting you know and this slowly uh we're hopeful that that we're going to do it how do we, how do we feel about it optimistically I, I, yes because there's this message keeps getting put out about being sustainable about cutting our cloth accordingly and that's music to my ears because mm. we're not a massive club we get ten thousand home supporters you know, we sort of know what that sort of finance is. When we was in the Premier League, our average attendance was somewhere between fourteen and eighteen thousand in the Premier League. You know, uh, so we 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 what for myself and a lot of other people, we don't want to go splashing out massive wages, massive transfer fees, and ending up back in trouble. You know, uh, so the optimism's there that we've got the club. We've also got a lot of local lads coming through now which uh, we've tended not to over the past few years. We've been bringing in, you know, we've been buying players. We've been playing older players as well, like mid-20s and upwards. Now uh, we've got the second youngest squad in, in the division. You know, there's only Peterborough who's young, got a younger squad than us. And we've, I think we're three players over 30. So it shows you, you know, that's, that's taking the average age up with those three. So it shows you we've got some really young kids in there, which is, is, is brilliant, is brilliant. Mm-hmm. But moving on to the the on field uh, discussions then, and um, will City uh, welcome the Latics to St James Park in what looks to be a really great game on Saturday? I'm sure you're looking forward to it as well. Um, one man returning to face his former club is our very own Gary Coldwell, and he's a he's a man who has had enormous success with with Wigan Athletic, winning both the FA Cup as a player and the League One title as manager in 2016. Just how highly is he regarded uh, at the DW Stadium? Well, by me, extremely highly. Uh, yeah. He's uh, fabulous. He's a, he's a lovely guy. Um, yeah, I've, I've sp- spoken with him many a time. He's been on our podcast. He's a, been a brilliant guest. Um, I, I presented him with Player of the Season award when he was when he played with us after he scored a goal at Anfield uh, to win us the game two one. Uh, he, he was a warrior on the pitch. He, unfortunately, he were injured for the cup final. He was on the. He did a John Terry. He was on the bench, but he went up and picked the cup <laughs> up with Emerson Boyce. But I mean, he, he was involved with that. So how can you not say you know the guy's a legend? I mean, one thing I we rib him about when we see him is the following season we got to the semi final. We played Arsenal. Was winning one nil with, with eight minutes to go. They equalised. It went to penalties, and Gary uh, walked walked up to take the first penalty and missed. <laughs> so. <laughs> So that was in the penalty shootout. So he missed the first penalty. But uh, yeah, he's, he's held in, in, in great regard. And, and you've got another one of our former um, former players there as well in, in Yannick, Yannick Wilshire. Yep. Uh, power and pace. Um, he, he was brilliant for us. Absolutely superb. We got seven million quid for him off Norwich City as well. So uh, I've, I've been picked him up for 250,000. Uh, so looking forward to, to you know, coming across both those two. But the intriguing thing about Saturday for me is Gary Caldwell's big mate, Sean Malone, is the manager of Wigan Athletic. And they were both at uh, exactly, up in yeah. Scotland, both at Ibs together, weren't they? Yeah, both at Hibernian. I think, well, Sean was 
was the manager and, and Gary was the assistant. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, now they meet as um, both as head coaches. I think it's a, it's a really interesting dynamic. Well, Gary, Gary Cole actually sent me a message when Sean Maloney was appointed at Wigan. And he said, you've got yourself a, a, a fan- fabulous manager there. And I knew we had because the ball photo of the Roberto Martinez school as well, you know, which I'm a massive fan of. I mean, he's a, for me the greatest coach that ever lived is, is Johan Cruyff. I mean, his, his <laughs> philosophy on football is not, just... not biased at all. <laughs> but you know, and but the the they follow his teachings. So Maloney um, studied at the Johan Cruyff uh, football coaching university in Amsterdam, you know, so they're steeped in it. And I have no doubt we'll play exactly the same way that you play. Because when Carwell was at Wigan, we played uh, with three at the back, wing backs, two in midfield. We brought Yannick on as a, a you know, a, an impact sub. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's how we did it. Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're not too dissimilar now, you know, so it'll be really intriguing on Saturday. Yeah, well, I'm sure it will be. I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to it. There are plenty of players in Wigan's ranks at the moment uh, who could cause some trouble on Saturday for City. I think that's probably fair to say. Who do you think has the potential to cause City some real problems? Who, who's going to who's gonna make the difference? Well, with two players suspended on Saturday, Charlie Wyke, a top scorer, yep. and Callum Wang, who's, who's uh, last time was in this division, he scored, I think he scored 17 goals. So... Uh, they are both missing. Uh, but Stephen Humphreys, Stevie Humphreys has started the season really well, uh, really well. We had, he was out on loan uh, last season, but he's, uh, he's he's played every game so far. I think he scored three goals for us. Tello Asgard on his day, superb player. Uh, he's been a little bit off form, I, I think, but he's still he's still got a couple of goals this season. But uh, he'd be, definitely be one one to watch. But unfortunately, we've got a lad from Arsenal. Uh, he's going to be out as well. Matt Smith, uh, central midfield player, everything w- we did went through him, but he's ended up having to have an earlier operation. So he's got to be missing for six weeks. So he has a, a massive blow for us. I think he's not played now for the last four games and, and we've lost them all. So it shows you how important he is. But we've got some good, good still good lads in there. Young centre back, Charlie Hughes, everybody's raving about him, rightly so. He's going to end up playing in the Premier League. A 21-year-old goalkeeper, just been called up by England under 21, been capped by them. We've got a, a, a player called Marshall Gordo, an absolute live wire. He's a, a left or right winger, depending you know which way he feels like he's, he wants to go. Uh, he's, I think he's got two assists and a goal in three games. He's picked up man of the match in two of those games. He really is good. And uh, yeah, he's, for me, I, I, the two players that I'd definitely pick out will be Stevie Humphreys, and I pick out Marshall Gordo as well. So the first player I mentioned and the last. Yeah, well, I mean, the way you're talking, it sounds like you're, you're pretty confident on uh, for Saturday. No, what? No. <laughs> you're shaking your no. head. Yeah, well, I am. That's it. The problem with us, Tom, is we've got a young side, and we started the the season off like a like like a house on fire. When we went to Derby, we won two one. Then we played. Um, Northampton and so on, we beat them. And then we played Bolton away and we won 4-0. And they they were telling us how, you know, they were going to storm the league this season. So we started off like a house on fire and we were brilliant. But we've got a young team, inexperienced. We've lost a couple of players with injury. And then the form dips. And then you know, we've had we've had three sending offs as well this season, three red cards. So it, it, it's difficult to break that that downward momentum then. And that's what we're finding at the moment. But you never know. It's a clash of styles. I, I'm, I'm saying opti- I'm not optimistic, but uh, we've got to change our fortune at some point because we're too good to be where we are. You've been teetering on uh, on giving me a prediction there, so I, I've, <laughs> I was... got to, I've, I've got to ask you for one. If if you're not gonna if you're not gonna give it to me like that, well, um, I mean, we've got two two managers who know each other inside out. We've got uh, two football teams who are going to play the same sort of football. And it can only end one way for me. It'll be one apiece. Okay, interesting. Well, I mean, it's going to be a great clash, I'm sure. I can't. I, you know, it's it's very difficult to split the two sides. Both had pretty similar starts to the season, so it will certainly be an interesting one. But thank you so much for for joining us, Barry. It's uh, it's been amazing to get your insight on, on the Latics. Cheers, Tom. Finally, I'm joined by Harry Lee, who gives us an update on his loan spell at Western Supermare. 
Harry, welcome to Parklife. Thanks so much for joining us. There's always a risk when players go out on loan uh, that they kind of go a little bit under the radar whilst they're away. And I, I couldn't let that happen. Uh, I think a lot of City supporters are really interested to hear how you're getting on with, with Western Supermare, the club that you've been at since July. Just tell our listeners a little bit about how you're finding it up in North Somerset on loan. First of all, thank you for having me on. Yeah, my time at Western, it's, it's going well. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm playing regular football at a good level for my age, as I'm only 18. And yeah, they've ever since I joined in July, the Western lads have been good with me, really made me feel welcome. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a strange one, really, because goalkeepers, when they're coming into a first team, uh, normally are... 25 over right 18 year olds yeah. don't really get get first team opportunities but for you the opportunity to go out on loan has given you that that opportunity at first team level a little bit lower than than you know league one which extra are in but uh, but you must be thriving in in that situation where you get consistent first team football yeah obviously at my age i think the most important thing is playing games obviously i, I had two loan spells last year at dorchester and plymouth when I was even younger, playing good minutes. And yeah, like 18, playing in Conference South, I think for me, that, that can only benefit me. And like you said, you don't really see keepers come through till about 24, 25. So in that terms, I think I'm a, a bit ahead of, of other goalkeepers. But yeah, that can only lead me in a good good way. And uh, Weston, having an OK season this year as well, I suppose some of the results haven't necessarily gone your way this year. But but do you feel like yeah. it's a, a good group of players that can that can get a decent league finish in, in National League South? Oh yeah, we um we started well, so we we won the first three, um, and then had a little blip. But I think the players there have been together for so long that like anything that's chucked in front of them. They just deal with it. We come out of the blip. We won a few few more games. And yeah, I think the, the boys at Western, their aim is to s- stay in the league. So obviously, they got promoted last year. But like the players there, they're, they're quality. So I think this year, we could, we could finish as high as we wanted to. Amazing. Well, I think it's clear to see that you're enjoying your football at Western. Yeah. Um, but let's talk a little bit about your journey through the first team, through the academy uh, and all that jazz. Um so just tell us a bit, a little bit about the time, your time in the first team over the past couple of, the, of years. I believe I'm right in saying that you signed with a club after spending some time on trial at Premier League clubs, including Everton and Chelsea back in 2021, but committed your future to the club. What's it been like ever since? Well, it's been class ever since. So obviously I went on trial at those clubs you just mentioned. Uh, but Exeter, they said to me, look, you're a young keeper. You stay in around the first team environment, it'll make you do well. And I haven't really looked back since. Um, I don't regret anything. And training with the first team players, League One, League Two, getting a promotion uh, in the League Two season, it's, it's been class. And I can't thank all the old coaching staff enough and the new coaching staff now who have been class. Like I said, I've turned down some bigger clubs. But you know, at the end of the day, it's for my development and I feel like I'll develop better at Exeter. Exactly. And, you know, you wouldn't be the only one who uh, who starts off at Exeter and goes on to, yeah. to bigger things. I mean, the club's got a history for it. But after you signed, I think the coaching staff were pretty keen to get you more involved in the first team. You mentioned being around the first team squad and, and those goalkeepers. Cameron Dawson, Jamal Blackman, Scott Brown, all really experienced goalkeepers. Who you must have learned a lot from. Yeah, I I learned a lot from, from Scotty because obviously he was he was coaching, but still playing. So he'd, he'd still train uh, in, in some sessions and having him and Cam in the same season, like, I don't think there's two other goalkeepers. Well, I've got to be careful what I say. Cause I've got <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Ville, but experienced goalkeepers like them to helping me because I was only young. I was 16, 17. So yeah, I, I learned loads off Cam. Cam really, really helped me in the year he was here. And Scotty, they, they were both class. But yeah, Kev, Kev, uh, Jammer, Veer, all, all the keepers since since Scott and Cam, they've been class with me. Picking up traits from Veer, picked up traits last year from from Jammer, even though I'm a, I'm a different keeper to him. But yeah, I'm, I'm picking up traits and hopefully in the future I get to 
get to show the fans that. Yeah, well, you mentioned Jamal Blackman. Of course, you made your debut for the club in some tricky circumstances, it must be said. Uh, back, was it away yeah. against Derby last year? Yeah, when, away at Derby. When he came off late with an injury, and I think you got about two minutes, didn't you? Um, yeah. How did you find that experience? Well, obviously, you don't expect a keeper to get injured. No. Um, <laughs> so I, I was just sat on the bench. And it happened so quick. All of a sudden, I see Jammer just laying on the floor, thinking <laughs> like he's he's died for the ball. He's he's got it. You just get back up. And I see, I think it was Sweens calling over the medical team. And I was thinking, I could be in there now. So I've <laughs> gone up, started jogging along the sideline, and I only did like two stretches. And then Gaffer and Scotty called me over. It's like, hey, you coming on? And I was I was like, oh my days. Like no. <laughs> No better place to do it in League One, really. Like Pride Park in front of twenty odd thousand. Obviously, I was nervous, really nervous. But but yeah, I held, held me own when I come on, and yeah, that that's probably one of the best experiences in my in my football career so far. Yeah, I mean it was it was amazing, really. When I saw you come on, I was like, oh my goodness me! I mean, <laughs> for such a young goalkeeper, it's such a it's such a big ground. It must have been really daunting. But not only that. Yeah. I mean, the week after, Jamal Blackman had a concussion, I believe it was, was out for a week. Was yeah. there any chance that you were ever going to play in that in that Devon derby that came straight after? I, to be totally honest, I don't know. Um, <laughs> obviously, Jammer had the concussion. I was, I, I was thinking like, what what will happen? But the the coaching staff didn't say anything, so. I'm not sure on that Remains one. A mystery. Oh, obviously, yeah, it still it still does to this day. <laughs> well, since then you've had a couple of short-term loans, which have gone pretty well. But now you're at Weston, yeah. and you're there until January at least. You've got this longer-term loan deal sorted. Does it feel a bit better to have that assurance that you're going to be at one club for a set period of time, not just this month here, month there? Yeah. It, it does. Um, it helps having three other first team goalkeepers as well, because um, I know if one of them gets injured, then Woodsy or Sean will go in goal, um, and then one will be on the bench. So that that helps. Um, before, obviously, it was it was just Jammer, Jammer and me. And then when I did go out on loan, they'd either put or before that time they'd put Scotty on the bench or or someone else. So obviously, it helps knowing that. I'll be at West until January so I can get the best out of my football ability and show show the Western fans first and for all that I'm a good goalkeeper. I'm, I'm here for the club and I'll do, do my best for them. Of course. And you, whilst you're at Western, you're still training with the squad on a regular basis. How are you finding that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's good. I train, I train with Western on a Tuesday and Thursday and then the rest of the week I'm, I'm with the first team. And that helps because obviously training with League One footballers every day and then going down and playing playing against Conference South players obviously no disrespect to them but League One players are uh, are better so that that helps me helps me a lot really and I think that shows with some of my performances when Weston have been under the cosh like I have I've performed for them so yeah it help, it's helping my development and yeah yeah it's good Amazing. And uh, your loan deal's up in January, as, as I mentioned earlier. Do you have any idea where you'll be um, or what you'll be doing uh, during the second half of the season? Um, no, nah, not not really. Not yet. Obviously, if I carry on playing playing for Western and performing for Western, I think we, we could look at staying there for the second half. Um, if not, I'll come in, I'll compete, I'll train every day and try and train better than three three good goalkeepers in front of me. I know they're all training their hardest so they can be in the squad as well. But if, if not that, I, that, that's the only two things I, I can really think of what would, what would happen. Well, it leads me quite nicely on to my last question then. And uh, well, it's inevitable. Are, are you eyeing up that number one shirt when Ville leaves at the end of the season? Gary's out of contract. Yeah, I think, I think you have to. I think I'm performing at a good level now. And yeah, I think if, if I didn't, there'd be be something wrong um yeah I, that's that's my aim ever since i signed when i was 16 that i want the number one shirt at this club and i want to have a cement spot in the in the first team hopefully i'll have the have the number 
one shirt with Lee on the back of it soon. That would be great, wouldn't it? Um, well, yeah. that's that's amazing. Thank you so much, Harry. Um, I'm sure that you'll end up with that number one on the back of your shirt very soon. Uh, playing in front of the big bank, it'll be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that will be great. Cheers, Harry. Cheers, thank you. That's all for this episode of Park Life, the official Exeter City podcast. Let us know what you want to hear more of via our social media channels. And don't forget to hit the follow button so you never miss an episode. Thanks for listening. Up the city. He's been picked out. Socks down to his angle. Picks out Stansfield. That's the hat trick. And that's what dreams are made of.